Hi, I'm Seth Johnson with LandaHouse.com. This is a hydraulic ram pump. Now it takes water from a stream or creek and pushes it uphill. I've written an ebook to help you build this. So in the description below this video, you'll find the link to that ebook. Um, it gives you a how to and also a parts list. So get that real quick. And um, once you have gotten that book, I will then uh, show you how to put this thing together. So let's go inside and do that. Step one, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, the one and a half to one and a quarter rubber connector, and the one and a fourth ball valve. Make sure you use your flathead screwdriver to loosen this metal ring on the one and a half inch side and then you're going to connect this to the ball valve getting it on as far as you can then take your screwdriver and simply tighten this down make sure it makes a good seal and there you go Step two, take your Teflon tape or pipe tape and wrap each of these pipe nipples at least four times. You want this to be on here securely so that whenever these pipes are connected, they're going to make a airtight and watertight seal. So if it takes several wraps, it's okay. Step three, take your ball valve and one of the one and a quarter pipe nipples and screw this in, being careful to match up the threads evenly. And you're gonna to want to tighten this fairly tight and you can use uh, some wrenches. Just be sure not to Pull too tight because you will strip the threads. Step four, connect your ball valve with pipe nipple to the one and a quarter union. Make sure that your union is screwed together because if it's not, you might be losing this middle piece. So just make sure these are tight before you attach the two. Step five, take a one and a quarter pipe nipple and screw that into the other end of your one and a quarter union. Step six, take a one and a quarter threaded T and screw that onto the pipe nipple. Now you'll notice that this T when tightened may not be aligned with the ball valve here. That's where this union comes in handy. You can loosen the union, turn your T to the desired angle, and then tighten your union back down. This allows your T to be facing upwards. Step seven, screw pipe nipples one and a quarter inch onto both ends of this threaded T. Make sure that both of them are very firmly tightened in. Step eight, we're going to take one of the one and a quarter check valves or swing valves and we're going to attach that to the top pipe nipple. Now it's important that the direction of flow indicated by this arrow is facing down, which means the swinging trap door on the inside will hang loose and down whenever attached. For this um, swing valve or check valve, it does not necessarily matter what direction or angle, I should say, the swing is, as long as it's facing up and down. 
Step nine, we're going to attach the other check valve or swing valve. This time the arrow or direction of flow needs to be facing away from the rest of the system we've built so far. Now when this one is tight, it's very important that the swing door hinge is facing up because it needs to be closed due to natural gravity force so that whenever there's pressure behind here, it stays closed. But when pressure is released, it can easily swing up and then back down. So just make sure that this ball part is facing up. Step 10, take another one and a quarter pipe level and screw into this check valve. Step 11, take another threaded T and screw that onto this pipe nipple. Now you want this tight, but it also must be facing up. So when the system is turned like this, it must be facing up just like this one was facing up. Step 12. Now I ran out of Teflon tape, but I'm going to um, continue with the build just to show you what to do. But you're going to want to make sure that all pipe has Teflon tape on it. So from the top of the T, go ahead and screw in your pipe nipple. It's time to talk about the step up from one and a fourth inch to three inch for the pressure tank. Now there are several ways you can do this. And um, if you can find a bushing that goes from one and a quarter to three inch, then use that because you can simply go from your threaded pipe straight to your pressure tank. But if you cannot find that piece, and it's very difficult to find, you'll have to use a various number of different components to step up to the tank. So for step 13, what I have done is I have found a bushing, a metal bushing, that goes from one and a quarter thread to one and a half thread. Then I've found a PVC pipe one and a half thread to one and a half glue end. From this one and a half glue end, I found a one and a half inch to three inch bushing. And from this bushing, I then go to this coupling. Now it's a lot of pieces and it's kind of complicated. Um, and there are other ways of getting this to work. You may be able to find um, an alternative, but this does work. So then your PVC pipe 3 inch will go into this coupling here. Step 14, we're going to use purple primer for our PVC pipe. Make sure you do this in a well vented area. But just take and coat every surface that you're going to be connecting. Step 15. You're going to use the PVC cement to glue the PVC parts together. You'll have to move quickly because PVC cement will set up in just a couple of seconds. So first, take your 3 inch PVC pipe and your 3 inch coupling. Take your cement and coat around the 3 inch pipe. Once that's done, turn it up, put it into your coupling. Next, you're going to take the one and a half to three inch bushing, it's the glue cap bushing, and you're going to attach this to your coupling. So, just as before, coat this completely. And that should make a very solid seal just like that. Next, we're going to take the end cap and glue that to the bottom of the PVC pipe. Now 
All right, and that's going to set up. Now the last part we have to connect is this piece right here, which is the one and a half inch thread to one and a half inch glue part. Just coat that and connect those pieces. The pressure tank is done, but because it is so large and cumbersome, I recommend setting it aside for a moment. For step 17, take your one and a fourth to three-fourths bushing and screw that into the other end of your threaded T. Again, make sure these pieces have Teflon tape on them. Step 18, take a three-fourths inch pipe nipple and screw that into your threaded bushing. For step 19, if you're going to use a pressure gauge, this is where you would put a three-fourths inch threaded T to attach a pressure gauge up here. I'm not going to do that right now though. So for this model, take your 3 fourths inch ball valve and screw that onto that pipe nipple. I'm going to make sure, make sure that's tight. Step 20, take a 3 fourths inch pipe nipple and screw it into the other end of your 3 fourths inch ball valve. For step 21, take your union, your 3 fourths inch union, and screw that onto that last 3 fourths inch pipe nipple. Step 22, take a 3 fourths inch pipe nipple and attach to the other end of the union. For step 23, Take your garden hose on one end thread to a pipe thread on the other end and attach that to the 3 4 inch pipe nipple. For step 24, it's time to go back to our pressure tank. So take your 1 and a fourth to 1 and a half bushing and attach that to the pipe nipple that's coming off of the second threaded T. Now take your pressure tank and screw that onto the one and a half inch bushing. And again, you're going to want to make sure you have Teflon tape on this as well. It's very important that these connections here be water and air tight. Step 26. If you're not using a garden hose, then you're going to want to replace this piece right here with another rubber coupling for connecting to a flex tube or some other form of delivery pipe. Now the basic parts of the pump build are done. So now that you have your hydraulic ram pump built, let's go to the creek and install it. All right, let's go. First, we'll start by placing our flex tubing into the creek. I already have 100 feet set up for my system, so we're going to use that. When you place your ram pump, you want to make sure that it's facing as straight up and down as you possibly can. That's because these little flaps inside of here need to be able to fall down straight when, with gravity. So. Just make sure you can secure it to some place and then use rocks or something to uh, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Now it's time to attach the flex pipe to the pump. To do this, we're going to use a screwdriver and just make sure your pipe doesn't have any leaks on it so it needs to be real tight. It's that easy to install your hydraulic ram pump, but now let's get it working. Make sure that your delivery end is shut off and that your drive pipe end is open. Then just go set your uh, delivery, sorry, your drive pipe in back into the water up creek. 
first let's start by placing a hardware cloth or mesh on our black flex tubing. Now you'll notice whenever I sunk my drive pipe head into the water, this top valve snapped shut. That means it's got pressure right here. To start this thing, we've got to push this over and over again until enough pressure is built up in the tank. So let's push it. That's going to build pressure in our tank right now. After a bit of work, you'll get your pump to this point right here. This means it's primed and ready to go. Now we open up our valve. Once you've got your valve open, you'll start getting water out of the end of the hose. Like this one right here. Now this valve is just barely open, but you can turn it open more and get more flow out. Well, I hope you enjoy this hydraulic ram video, and I hope you enjoy building your own. They're a lot of fun and can be very useful in watering gardens and whatever you need to use water uphill for. All right, catch you later. Bye.